So we're going to do questions 11 through 20 from the Spring Amatic Student Math Leagues Contest, Spring of 2014. So this is February, March 2014. So I'm going to start with question 11. So it says the equation a to the fourth plus b squared plus c squared equals 2014 has a unique solution in positive integers. For this solution, find a, b, c. So this is a question here where um, we're just supposed to find a, b, c, and instead of like giving us a set of list numbers to try, you could just check them out and see what works. We have to add a plus b plus c when we're done to sort of verify we have the right numbers. So goal is really to find a, b, c, but then they're having us give us an answer in kind of a funny way. So we have a to the fourth plus b squared plus c squared equals 2014. So what we've got is a to the fourth plus b squared plus c squared equals 2014. Now the first time I saw one of these, I thought, oh, there's going to be some trick here. Um, I think there's actually not. So we're going to use our calculator to sort of do an efficient search here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for b. I'm going to pick one of the smaller exponents and solve for that. So if I do that, I get b squared is 2014 minus a to the fourth minus c squared. So b is plus or minus the square root, but it was a positive integer, so it's going to be the positive square root of 2014 minus a to the fourth minus c squared. There. Sorry, just trying to extend my square root. Um, okay, so now we want to find our solutions. So what I'm going to do is focus on the possible values of b, or sorry, possible values of a. So we have a could be, well, it could one, it's going to be a positive integer at most one, two, three. How big could it be? Well, a to the fourth can be at most 2014. So what I'm going to do is take my calculator, do 2000, whoops, 2014 to the one fourth, which is 0.25. That'll be the fourth root. And I get 6.69, that means a can be at most 6. So we get 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 6. So I'm going to try each of these. What I'm going to do is just fix a as, say, 1. <coughs> and then I can have b as a function of c. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my calculator. Just throw this over here, maybe. I'm going to go to y equals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do square root of 2014 minus, now this would be a to the fourth, but I'm going to fix sort of the one with the largest exponent here as 1 to the fourth minus c, we can let that be x. And we can let our calculator do the, use its table and go through a bunch of possible values of x at once. So now what I'm going to do is hit second, go to the table, that's 0 here. So this is my x, so this is if a was 1 and C was, well, 0, but A was 1, C is 1. This is what B would be equal. So we're looking for B to be a whole number. So now I just need to kind of arrow down here. Um, note this problem, there's symmetry between B and C. We can assume here that C is smaller than B or B is bigger. So we can just keep going down until the X values get bigger than the Y's. Here, otherwise things would switch around. So we can just go down. And I'm just looking, scanning to see if there's a whole number probably do this a little bit faster on an actual calculator um, than this emulator. And already I've got an x bigger than a y, and you can see, well, it would be the values would swap, but these y's aren't integers here. And so we know that a equals 1 did not work. So now we can try a equals 2. So I go to y equals. All I need to do is arrow over, try the 2, and I'll go back to the table. Now it'll start where it was. Note 32 is bigger than 31 here, so I can just scroll up from here. And again, I'm checking the y's for a whole number, which is generally pretty easy to pick out visually. It won't put the decimal points here, and I see no whole numbers. I only need to go up to x equals 1. Okay, a equals 2 didn't work. Now let's try a equals 3. Try 3. Back to the table, now it's going to be back here. I'm going to scroll through. Here, oh, there we go. So we got a 13 and a 42. So we have x is 13, that's c, b is 42. So what we get is b was 42, c was 13, and I forget what a was because I was kind of in automatic mode, but I can go back to y equals a was 3. So probably once I have these two, I figure out what a is pretty easily. Anyway. So a is 3. One suggestion I would have is check that that actually works. Let's quit here. 
I'm going to do 3 to the 4th plus 42 squared plus 13 to the 2nd or 13 squared. It does, in fact, give me 2014. Now let's go back to the original question. And what I'm looking for again was A plus B plus C. And so that's 42 plus 13 plus 3. That's 55 plus 3. A plus B plus C is 58. That is answer B here. So our answer is B, 58. Okay, on to number 12. Let's look at 12. Oops. 12 says different letters are placed on the 18 faces of three standard six-sided dice, one per face. Choosing one letter from each die, the following words can be formed. So we have a big list of words here that can be formed. And like what we're going to get is bow means one of the dice has a B, another one has an O, another one has a W. So the first thing I would do here, I'm just going to have to write down these words here. Um, let's go through, maybe we can get a, let's see, accessories, there's like a snipping tool here. And so what I can do, let's see if I can make this work with this technology. I just want to be able to get rid of this question here. Well, let's put these ones down here too. Almost got what I want. Let's try that again to get the whole question. So we'll pop that, and then we can copy it, and we can go in here, and we can paste that. And there's our question here. And now I can scroll down and look at those particular words, which should be helpful. So there's my question. Now, what I want to see is I have these words here. So the first thing I'm going to do, personally, is I'm going to count how many different letters show up. So we have three dice, and they have six sides each. So the question is, do we have 18 different letters, or might there be like an O on two of the dice? So that's my first goal here. So what I'm going to do, just make a table. Whoops. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z and just cross out the letters when we see them. Uh, so B, we got a B O W. We have B O Y. We have C O T. We have D R Y. We have G A S. We have H A T. We have O A T, we have O L D, P A Y, P I E, R E D, S I X. So how many did not did we not get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Twenty six minus eight is eighteen. So that's probably going to make things easier. The letters each letter only shows up once. I was just trying to figure that out there. Now what we can do is we can start with sort of our dice. So we're going to die one, two, and three. So we have B, O, W. So we're going to get for these sort of, well, let's maybe not draw it like that. We're going to get six possibilities on each die and then things that we cannot have here over here. So these are going to be the letters over here that we do have. These are the letters that we don't have on that die. So here will be the letters we don't have on the B die, the letters we don't have on the O die. Here's the letters we don't have on the W. So we dealt with bow. Now boy, we're going to be O. That's going to force a Y on the W here. And this is where it's important to know that sort of each letter only shows up once here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to make that assumption. OK, C, O, T. Well, we have an O, and the C and T could go with the B. C or T go with the B, and the other one goes with Y and W. But what we do know is the C and T don't show up with the L. Next one, dry. We know the Y is here, so we know we won't get the D and the R. Next word is gas. Those are all new. That doesn't really tell us anything. Um, so we've got gas. Maybe I'll circle that one to say that's new info. Hat. OK, so we know this can't have the T, so it has to have either the H or the A. Not really a lot of nice info there. Oat. That tells me I don't have the A and I don't have the T with the O. Now if I look at hat, now I have the T and the A. So I must have, or I can't have the T or the A, so I'm going to get rid of the H. 
Then we have old. Old, let's see, this is O. The L can't be here. The D, or sorry, that's the O, so I can't have the L or the D. Now I can't have a D with this die or this die, so the D has got to go there. And then we have one. Same thing, we won't get an N, we won't get an E. We're going to extend these further. Pay, P-A-Y. We can't get a, we have the Y here, so we can't get a P or an A. And now if I look at this, we have an A, not on this die, not on this die, so the A must go here. And we have pi. Let's see, I don't have a P, I, or E. Don't really have much I can do with that. Let's circle that for now. Red, the D is there. So no R, no E. We have an, no R here, no R there. So the middle die has to have the R. The E is not on the first die or the second die, so it has to be on the third die. We get red. Six, I don't have any information about. So let's now go back to some of these we circled. Gas, I have an A there, so no G, no S. Maybe it's a good idea to just do another pass altogether. So I get bow, get boy, cot, still don't have enough information to figure out. Dry, gas, I have an A and then a G or a S on either of these. Hat, let's see, I have the H and the A, so the T has to go here. So the T goes there. And now we can go back to cot had the T. So we get O and T. That's going to force a C there. Let's see. Oat, O-A-T. Old, we have an O and a D. So the L has got to go down there. <coughs> and then we have one. We have the O and E. And so we've got the N left over. So it starts to get faster at some point. Pay, we have the Y and the A. We have the P left over. Pi, we have a P and an E with the I left over. No, this die is complete. We've got six letters there. Red, we can do R, E, D. Six, we have S and X. So I think what we've got left is six and gas here. And so that should be, let's see, S, G, X are the letters we're missing. So we're missing two letters here, one here. Now you notice S shows up in both of these. So if we put an S here, you'd end up with both G and X here because the A and I are here. And there's only one spot left. So that means we have to have an S here and a G here and an X here. So here, I just filled in all of the info on the die. This may have been overkill for this question. I might have had some partial information and could figure out which of these words would go here. Um, might have been a good idea to keep track as it along. Kind of nice to go along though. Eat, so I have E and T on the same die, so I won't be able to do eat. Wrap. R and P on the same die. Can't do wrap. Top. T, O, O and P on the same die. Wad. Here is A and D on the same die. One. Better work. N, O, W. So that's my answer. So my answer is E, 1. So I'll just kind of work through that one. It's sort of a nice little logic problem, I guess. Okay. So let's look at, that was 12. Let's look at 13. So 13 says the fraction A over B is 0 0.455. Well, actually, when rounded to three decimal places, if A plus 1 over B plus 1 is 0 0.467 when rounded to three decimal places, find A plus B. So I'm going to go do another, uh, just kind of copy this over so we can look at it. Oops. Let's go there. And let's paste our question. Okay, so there's our question. Let me read this all at once. Okay, so now first thing I'm going to do is A over B is 0 0.455 when rounded to three decimal places. So what that means effectively is whoops, A over B, this is going to be at least 0 0.4545. It's got to be at least that big to have this 4 round up to a 5 with a 5 or bigger there. And at most, this can be 0 0.4555. Now note, this is less than. If I actually got equal to the 5, that second 5 would round up to a 6. Here I get a less than or equal to. If this was straight up equal, this 5 would round that 4 up to a 5. So that's what my first statement says. My second statement tells me that a plus 1 over b plus 1 
same idea I can do is between 0 0.4665 would round up to 467 and at most 0 0.4675. Oh, so I really have these two inequalities. I'm going to assume A and B are whole numbers here. Um, I guess it doesn't technically say that. Maybe that's implied in the definition of fraction that we're going to use. Um, but I think it's sort of necessary to do the problem here, perhaps. And so what I'm going to do is multiply. Well, I'm going to try and simplify this. I'm going to multiply this equation, all three parts, by B, assuming B is positive. So I get 0 0.4545B less than equal to a, less than 0.4555b. Over here, I'm going to multiply everything by b plus 1. So I'll get 0.4665b plus 0.4665, less than equal to a plus 1, less than, it should have been a less than equal here. I had a less than, or sorry, it should have been a less than. I had a less than equal. Less than 0.4675a plus 0 0.4675. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this some more by subtracting the 1. So I'm going to get, let's see, this minus 1, or sorry, well, I get the 0 0.4665b, and when I subtract 1, I get minus 0 0.5335, less than equal a, less than 0 0.4675b, minus... 0.5325. There. So I get these two inequalities. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got A in the middle of each. Now, there's a temptation to like add these together, but when you add two things less than A, here I guess that's less than or equal to 2A, less than or equal to two things added together. I'm not sure that's going to help us a whole lot. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this bottom thing and say that's less than or equal to A. So it's bounded above by this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0.4545b and say that's smaller than this here. So 0.4675b minus 0.5325. And then what I can do is I can move the 0.5325 over here and move the 0.4545b over there. And I get 0 0.5325 is less than, let's see, when I subtract, I'll get 0. Point, let's see, I'll get a 0, I'll get 013B. And now I can divide by 0.013B, and I'll get B is greater than 0 0.5325 over 0 0.013. Make that a little bit nicer. 013, which, you know, is bigger than, well, now I'm going to use my calculator, 0.5325 divided by 0.013. So do that division, bigger than 40 here, so 40.96 here. So I know it's, well, how about bigger than 40, and that tells me B, I guess, is greater than or equal to 41. So B is at least 41. So that was the sort of lesser part of this one and the bigger part of this one. I'm going to do the same game with the big part here and the small part here. So what that's going to allow me to do is to take 0.4665b minus 0.5335. So this part here, that's less than or equal to a, which is less than 0.4555b. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move this 0.5335 to the other side. It's a positive. And I'm going to subtract 0.4555b from the left. And you get 0. Point, let's see, 0, 1, 1, b. Something feels a bit strange. I was thinking I should get really the same difference with both of these. So let's see. 0, 1, 3 would be 0, 06, 7 there. 665. Six, Here when I add this I get 011. Oh, one, one. Uh, 4555. Five, 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 five. So I add 0.13. Here when I add I get 
I'll just do the B's 0.13. So I think that's actually okay here. Feels funny to me right now, so I'm just checking that. And here, this is going to give me B less than 0 0.5335. Again, that's a little different. Somehow that feels a bit wrong to me. Um, where did the 5325 come from? Oh, it's these two subtractions. Those should be off by 0 0.0. Um, by 0 .00, 0 0.01. And when I do this, so I'm going to sort of check my notes here and make sure that's what I got before. Four. I want something a little different, perhaps. Nope, I think it's the same. So this is bounded above by 0.5335 divided by 0 0.011. And I get 48.5 here. So that's less than 49. Actually, just equaled straight up 48.5. And that means B is at most 48. So B is either 40, some number between 41 and 48. So I know now that B, when I put these two inequalities together, B is somewhere between 41 and 48. So now I know that AB, here, I'm out of space here, AB rounds to 0. Point, what was it? AB runs to 0 0.455, and A plus 1 over B plus 1 rounds to 0.467. So this was sort of the initial information. Now I'm going to use my calculator just to search for A and B because I've got a fairly small range on B. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Y equals, clear this out from the previous question, move this over here so you can look at this. So I'm going to let B equal X here. So now A, or sorry, not B equal X. I'm going to let B go from 41 to 48. So I'm going to do X divided by 41. So A is X. B I'm just going to put in. And then I get up here X plus 1 divided by 42. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the table here. And what I'm looking for is these two decimals. So already I can see I'm too small. And I should get in the first column 0.455, something that rounds to that. Second column, something that rounds to 0.467. So I go through the first column. I didn't get anything that rounds to 0.455 at all. So that means 41 wasn't the number I wanted. Let's try 42. I'm going to have to switch this to 43 as well. Go back to the table. And we see 452, 476, not going to round to 455. So 42 wasn't what we wanted. So 43, second over 44. See the table. Uh, between 441, 465, I'm not going to get 455. So I get to add one more from 43 to 44. And then from 44, this is going to be one bigger, 45. Go back to the table, and we go down here. Aha, we have 4545. Four, five, five. So that would round to 0.455. And the next column, 467. So what we have now, here my issue here is I kind of forgot what A and B were. We've got X, which is A. So A equals 20 there. So we look at that, that was the A equals 20. B was our denominator, that was 44. B equals 44. Now I would check these just to always make sure that I didn't write that down wrong. Real quick and easy to do. So I'm saying 20 divided by 44 should round to 0.455. If I add 1 to both the top and bottom, 21 divided by 45, I get 0.467. So this definitely checks out. Now I need to see what I was supposed to do. Find A plus B. Well, that's 20 plus 44, that's 64, so our answer is B, 64. Okay, so there's 13. Let's look at 14. 14 here. Now let's go look at the question. I'm going to just snip this again. Whoops, copy, paste. Oops, hit that. There we go. So 14 is this question here. And we'll put that back in this other place. There we go. 
Okay, so this says if ax plus b equals 15 and 15x plus a equals b have the same unique solution where a and b are positive integers both less than or equal to 30, then find the sum of all possible values of a. So here, x is really the solution. And so we've got two equations. We have ax plus b equals 15, and we have 15x plus a equals b. We know a and b are positive integers, so they're at least 1, and they're at most 30. Here. So, okay. So what we're going to do, um, I'm going to take the, let's see, let's see, what's the equation here? I'm going to take the, well, I'm going to simplify these two together first. So what I'm going to do is plug in b equals 15x plus a into this first one. So I get ax plus b, that's 15x plus a, that equals 15. I'm going to solve this for x. So x, I can factor in x out of a plus ax plus 15x. I get x times a plus 15. This a has no x. I'm going to move that a to the other side as a minus a. And then x is 15 minus a over a plus 15. So that's one piece of information. Note, a has to be a positive integer. x does not have to be a positive integer. The other thing I'm going to do is I have this for x. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into the second equation. So b should be 15x plus a. So that's 15 times 15 minus a over a plus 15 plus a. So the real nature of this, I'm showing you sort of a solution here. Um, the real nature of this is you just kind of play around and see what happens. This isn't a type of equation that I'm really used to solving. So I just try some things and eventually something works out. Here. So what I'm going to get here, I look at this, I get, let's see, b is, I mean, you can distribute the 15 on top, 15 squared, that's 225, minus 15a over a plus 15. And what I'm going to get then is I'm going to write this a times a plus 15 over a plus 15. Now I do a times a plus 15, I get a squared plus 15a. And then when we add these, I get my denominator of a plus 15, the plus 15a and the minus 15a cancel. I get 225 minus a squared. So what I get now is this equation b has got to be 225 minus a squared over a plus 15. Now, this is a nice equation because a is some positive whole number between 1 and 30. B, I've got some formula, also has to be a positive whole number between 1 and 30. I can plug this into my calculator, letting x be a, or a be x, depending on how you want to look at it, and check which ones give me whole numbers. So let's go do that. Which x give me whole numbers? Let's move this over. You know, back to y equals. This is like the third question we've used this kind of thing for. Uh, we get 225 minus x squared. So x is a here. It's a little confusing. It's not this x, but the calculator needs x as the input, or this type of calculator does anyway. And then I get x plus 15. Now I'm going to go to my table, and I'm looking for, let's just go up to the top here. These are all whole numbers. That seems kind of suspicious. Let's make sure I entered what I wanted in here. 225 minus x squared divided by x plus 15. Let me go to my table. And I have 1, 2, 3. These all work out. 5, 6. These are the values of a here. So basically, all these values of a look like they're working. Somehow I feel like that's not what was supposed to happen here. Uh, let's look at that again. 225 minus x squared divided by x plus 15. Oh no, that really should be what's going on here. Um, except, so if I look at this, 225 minus a squared, this is 15 squared minus a squared, should factor as 15 minus a, 15 plus a, but I made a typo here. So what I have is 225 plus a squared. So that plus, that should be a plus, and this looked wrong, so I kind of caught that. Some of that is I knew what I was supposed to get. Um, so I get plus x squared. You would have figured out that your answers are way too small with what happened. And you can look back and see what's going on. So I get plus x squared. 
and then we get our table. And now we're looking for sort of the A's that give us a B that's also a positive whole number. So we get is A equals 3 works. So we get 3. Uh, let's see. Uh, 5 almost works. That's 12.5. That's not a whole number, but close. Uh, A equals 10. Down here. We have an A equals 15. We can go up to 30. And do we get anything else? We get 30 as well. 30 here. So these all work, and so you should just be able to add these up. 30 plus 15 is 45, plus 10 is 55, plus 3, that gives us the 58. And oftentimes when you solve this and you get one of these answers and they're sort of spaced out like this, that makes you feel, you know, fairly good about things. So I'm going to go C58. That was 14. Let's try 15. I'm going to go through and just kind of copy the question first off. And i got to get up here. The whole thing. And I'll copy that. Move it over. Okay, so here's question 15. So it says, let's scroll down here. If RSTUV satisfies the system, and then we have three equations here in five unknowns, then the value of this big expression here is something else. So what we're going to try and do is, presumably, you can add these equations together and get 6R plus 25S plus 28T plus 48U plus 64V. So maybe it's like 2 times this plus 1 times that plus 5 times that or something that's wrong, but something like that should work. So what I'm going to think about is I'm going to do A times the first equation, 3R plus 10S plus 16T plus 30U plus 25V. I'm going to add to that B times the second equation, which is the right-hand side for right now, 4R plus 15S plus 20, whoops, like that, plus 20T plus 36U plus 36V plus C times the left-hand side of the third equation, which is 5R plus 20S plus 24T plus 42U plus 49V. So if you add these up, all of that added together should be 10 times A plus 11 times B plus well, it should be this, so that, that's, that'll work out, but that's not really what I'm looking for here. I can do that at the end. What I'm really looking for is this 6R plus 25S plus 28T plus 48U plus 64B. So I want these to add up to 6R plus 25S plus 28T plus 48U plus 64V. And the idea here is this if this solves to A, B, and C, I'm trying to solve for A, B, and C, like A was 2 and B was 3 and C was 4, then I do 2 times 10 plus 3 times 11 plus 4 times 20. Now, clearly, that's not going to work because 4 times 20 is already too big and everything else is positive, but something like that. So when I look at this, I can sort of equate whoops, coefficients of R, coefficients of S, T, U, and V on both sides. That's going to give me five equations here. So I'm going to get with the R's, I'm going to get 3 times A. So I get 3A plus 4B plus 5c, that should be the 6. So it's the coefficient of r on the left, coefficient of r on the right. Same thing with the s's. I get 10a plus 15b plus 20c, and that should equal 25. Same thing with the t's. I get 16a plus 20b plus 24c. That should equal the coefficient of t is 28. Same thing with the u's, I get 30a plus 36b plus 42c, should equal my coefficient on the right is 48, and then I get 25a plus 36b plus 49c equals 64. Okay, so we get one, two, three, four, five equations, three unknowns, this is overdetermined. Some of these equations are presumably redundant here, otherwise we aren't going to get a solution in ABC. 
makes all of these work. Um, so what we have to do is sort of put these together in some sort of clever way. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is maybe simplify some of these. So this one here, there's a factor of 5. So let's just rewrite this first one. 3a plus 4b plus 5c equals 6. There's a factor of 5 in everything here, so that turns into 2a plus 3b plus 4c equals 5 here. Um, this next one, see there's a factor of 4 in everything. So that's 4a plus 5b plus 6c equals 7. Um, next one, see there's a factor of 6. That's 5a plus 6b plus 7c equals 8. Now, you might look at all of these. Here we have 2, 3, 4 equals 5. Here's 3, 4, 5 equals 6. If you add a plus b plus c here, you get this left-hand side, which gives you 6. So that tells me a plus b plus c has to be 1 when you add this to that. If you add this, let's see if you add a plus b plus c again, you get this left-hand side, the 4a plus 5b plus 6c. Add 1, that gives you 6 plus 1 is 7. And you add a plus b plus c again, and you get the 8. So these four are all sort of very related here. But this fifth one is actually different. There's nothing that's going to factor out here. So this fifth one, this is like actually 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared equals 8 squared. Well, 5a squared plus 6b squared plus 7. 5 squared a plus 6 squared b plus 7 squared c equals 8 squared. So now what I'm going to do is pick sort of the smallest one here. So that tells me I have 2a plus 3b plus 4c equals 5. And then that a plus b plus c equals 1. And then this last equation that feels a bit different. And now I have three equations and three unknowns. And I'm going to hope that this has a unique solution. A 25 looks a bit like a 15 there, but a 25. OK, so what I'm going to do, um, let's see, first step here. Let's maybe, let's see, so I could maybe use a matrix on my calculator, but I'm going to try and do this by hand. So let's do 25, this equation, minus 25 times this equation. So let's label these, how about in red, 1, whoops, I got myself 1, 2, 3. And so if I do 3 minus 25 times equation 2, what I get is, let's see, the a's will cancel. 36 minus 25, that's 11b. 49 minus 25 is 24c. 64 minus 25, that should be 39. So that's one equation in b and c. And then I could do 1, equation 1, minus 2 times equation 2. So if I do that, see, the a's will cancel, which is really what I wanted. 3b minus 2b is b. 4c minus 2c is 2c. 5 minus 2 is 3. Now I can do this top minus 12 times the bottom. It will give me a negative b. The c's will cancel. I guess I could have done minus 11. Somehow it seemed more natural to subtract off the c's here. It's a bit weird. 39 minus 3 times 12 is 36. I get 3. So b equals negative 3. And then c, I could figure out by doing this top equation. Now minus 11 times the bottom equation. So then the b's cancel. 24 minus 24c minus 22c gives me 2c. 39 minus 33 gives me 6. That gives me c equals 3. And then a plus b plus c equals 1. That needs to give me a equals 1. I'm just going to go make sure here. If a plus b plus c equals 1, um, that's going to satisfy this. So that works out. 2a is 2 plus 3b is minus 9. So that's negative 7 plus 4 times 3 is negative 7 plus 12. That checks out as 5. I have 25. Now these two, I have 3 and negative 3. So it's really going to be, let's see, 49 minus 36 is 13 times 3. That's 39. And then plus 25, that's 64. Or you just do 25 times 1 plus 36 times negative 3 plus 49 times 3 in your calculator and check that it's 64. So these satisfy these equations. Um, so we have a is 1, b is negative 3, c is 3. 
And so that will end up satisfying this equation. So each of these will be satisfied because I just add a plus b plus c to the left and 1 to the right. But we know a plus b plus c equals 1. And so we had a is 1, b is negative 3, c is 3. And so our answer in the end is going to be, let's see, 1, a is 1, times our 10, minus 3, b was negative 3, times 11, plus c was 3, times 20. So I'm pulling off the 10, the 11, the 20, times a, b, and c. And so I get, let's see, 60 plus 10 is 70, minus 33. That's going to give us 37. So our answer is E. So there's 15. Okay, next one. Let's do 16. So again, I'm going to copy these out here just so you can see the question. So this one, we've got some geometry. Okay, so here's question 16. Um, let's see. Oops, no, that's good. So it says in trapezoid A, B, C, D, A, B is parallel to C, D, and E is the point of intersection of A, C, and B, D. If the area of triangle C, D, E is 75 and the area of triangle A, B, E is 48, find the area of the trapezoid. So I'm going to draw this here. I'm going to draw my trapezoid. I don't know entirely what my trapezoid looks like. But I want these, this side and this side to be parallel. So let's do A, B, and then I have to go C, D, and sort of order around. Um, so I know that the A, B is parallel to C, D. Maybe I didn't draw it the best, but that's okay. And then E is the point of intersection of A, C, and B, D. So I intersect A, C, and B, D. And this point of intersection is E. And now we're telling us triangle CDE is 75, area 75, triangle ABE is 48. And we're trying to find the area of the trapezoid, the ABCD, the big area. So a couple of strategies here. One thing we can do is we could say, let's look at two triangles here. We have this triangle here, that red triangle, and then we have the blue triangle. Because this is a trapezoid, they both have AB as a base and the same height. That means the red triangle and the blue triangle are the same area. And so we could call that area, well, not X, but I want X to be the area of triangle EBC and AED, which will have to be the same because 48 is left over. And then the total area of the trapezoid would be 48 plus 75 plus, well, x plus x plus 2x. So I'm going to make x be the area of each of these triangles. And because sort of the bigger triangles have the same base, this blue triangle has the same base, same height, it's going to have area 48 plus x. ABD, triangle ABD, will have base, whatever length AB is, times the height of the trapezoid, times a half. And so x plus 48 will have to equal x plus 48. We call that y, I guess. We'd have y plus 48 equals x plus 48 we get that these two have the same area here. Okay, so that's sort of step one here. Okay, now we got to think about what can we do with this. Well, we have 48 and 75. Let's see, do we have any other information? It doesn't look like we do here. And so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to look at some notes here, figure out what I'm trying to remember what to do here. Um, so I'm a little bit lost here. So let's see. Um, what I can do, let's look at, well, I did something different. Um, so let's say, I know there's some similarity here between these two triangles. We could use that to figure out x. Um, this x, let's see, we could do it this way. So now let's look at two other triangles. How about we do it this way? So let's pull up maybe a yellow. So I have this, well, the blue. And then, oh, that didn't show up very well. I'll this bright green here. There. So we can look at triangle uh, ABC. I know that that color is really the best to write with. I'm worried it's not going to show up well. So triangle ABC in the blue. Let's look at that versus triangle let's see, BCD. So we take an X and we have the 48 and we have the 75. So let's see if we can figure out some relationship between these. 
so what I'm going to do is triangle A, B, C. Well, okay, this is 48 plus X. Triangle B, C, D is 75 plus X, the area. So area of, I'd like to use A as a function, but we have a vertex A, so I don't really like that. So area of triangle A, B, C and area of triangle B, C, D. We sort of have formulas for them, but can we do something else? Maybe because this is a trapezoid, um, what we could say here, let's see if we can think about this. This should be, if we look at these, so 48 plus X, 75 plus X, this is going to be the, let's see, one half, the length of see ABC, one half the length of AB times the height of the trapezoid. So maybe this distance here is the height. And down here, this triangle BCD, that's going to be one half one segment CD times the height. And so if we do a ratio of these, so let's do how about area of triangle BCD over area of triangle ABC. What I get is one half CD, and this segment CD times H, over one half AB times H. So the halves cancel, the H's cancel, and I get length of segment CD over length of segment AB. Note this is also. 75 plus x over 48 plus x. So that's one relationship we can use. Not sure if that'll entirely be useful. Another thing we can do is say we have sort of, say we have similar triangles here. So if we do triangle DEC is similar to triangle Let's see, DEC. So this angle here, angle ABD, will match triangle CDE because they have parallel sides. So that means the D is going to match with the B. E, so the middle angles of the E is the same, and then I get an A. So I can do the triangle B, A, B, E, or B, E, A, should be the same or similar to triangle D, E. I wrote S, but I meant C here. I'm kind of a mess of this. DEC. So these two triangles should be similar, and we have their areas, so we should be able to get the corresponding ratio of heights. So if we have similar triangles here, what we should be able to say is that their area, well, let's say this way. So the area of triangle DEC, let's just say this is, let's see which one looks like it's bigger. DEC looks like it's bigger. So let's well, let's start with that. That's fine. One half base times height. Well, we don't know what these are. Well, what should happen here is that if you do the area then of triangle BEA, what you'll get is one half. And if sort of the proportions here is that triangle BEA is K, each length of BEA is K times the length of DEC, you should get like KB times KH. This K is our sort of scaling constant. That's k squared, 1 half bh. So this is k squared times the area of DEC. Area of triangle DEC. So we can use that relationship here to say if we have two similar triangles, they're sort of multiplied, the well, you multiply by k squared times the area of one to get the area of the other. That is now what we can do is that the area of triangle BEA over the area of triangle DEC. Uh, let's switch that around. Sorry. Let's switch that around. So I'm going to do DEC on the, nope, I'm going to do BEA on the bottom. Just so I think it looks a little nicer. I'm going to do DEC on top, and what I'm going to get here, so I'm going to get this divided, by, well, really, this divided by this, and that's just going to give me K squared. Now, on the other hand, DEC area 75, ABE is 48. 
So that is 75 over 48. And now if you look at this, that means k is square root 75 over 48. So this is square root of 3 times 25 over 3 times 16. The 3's cancel, and I'll end up with 5 fourths. So our scaling factor is 5 fourths, where, let's see, when I'm going from DEC is 5 fourths, no. Scaling factor is 5 fourths here, so that's, I'm going to figure out which way is which here. So we have BEA, I have to multiply a, a side length of DEC by 5 fourths to get a side length of BEA. Does that make sense? So it should be that DEC is bigger, so it should be BEA times 5 fourths gives me DEC. When I divide, I get K, DEC is bigger than BEA. So when I did DEC, oh, I messed this up here. So this really shouldn't have been k squared. So I probably had it right the first time. DEC over BEA is 1 over k squared. So this is 1 over k. This whole thing is 5 fourths. And so my k is the reciprocal of 5 fourths, or 4 fifths. So that works out. Then BEA, the top triangle up above, was the smaller one. And my scaling factor is 4 fifths here. So I multiply sort of things in this triangle, well, things in the bigger triangle by 4 fifths to get the smaller triangle. Now, if you'll notice that CD over AB, these are corresponding sides of the similar triangles. So that means that this ratio, CD over AB, it's big to small, that's going to be 5 fourths. So we get an equation now that we can solve for X, and that will then allow us to find the area here. So let's just go down and do that equation. So we have 75 plus x over 48 plus x equals 5 fourths. When we solve this, I can cross multiply. 4 times 75 is 300 plus 4x. 5 times 48 is 240 plus 5x. Subtract the 4x from both sides. Subtract the 240 from both sides and you end up with 60 equals x. And so our total area, once we get 60 equals x, is, let's see, 48 plus 75. Let's see, that's 123 plus 2 times 60 is 120. That works out to be 243. So a little bit of work there in the geometry, but we finally get an answer of d243. And whenever that matches, I generally feel pretty good about things. Next one. New page here. And let's look at 17. Ah. Just a copy of this. Now, this one is not a multiple choice question here. So it's, it's the only question in this exam like that. So what we've got here, it says there's a unique integer n with the property that n has a four has the four digit representation pqrs in base 7 and the four digit representation qrsp in base 9 so same sort of digits or bits or whatever you call them so it's digits digit technically would mean base 10 i guess but we'll say digits here same digits just rearranged and we want to write the base 10 representation of this number in the corresponding blank on the answer sheet so what we're going to do here I'm just going to write out what it means that PQRS in base 7. So what that really means is I have S as sort of the 1's place, and then R would be the 7's place, and then Q would be the 7 squared place, or 49, and then P would be the 7 cubed place. That's going to be the same thing, so this is N here. Same thing as QRSP in base 9, so I have P in the 1's place, plus S in sort of the 9's place, plus R in the 9 squared place, plus Q in the R cubed place. So we get this equation here. And what I'm going to do, let's maybe square these things out. So we get S plus 7R plus 49Q plus 7 cubed is going to be 343P. This is going to be P plus 9S plus 81R 
plus 729q. So we get this to work out. And now I'm going to move everything to one side or the other, so that it'll make the coefficients all be positive. So with the p's, I'm going to subtract the p over here. I get 342p. That's the only one that's going to be positive on this side. The other side, so you have, uh, let's do the let's see, s, 9s versus s. 9 minus 1 is 8s. The r's, we have 81 minus 7 plus 74r. Then we do 729 minus 49. That's 680q. So we can work this equation down. Now you'll notice every coefficient is even, so I can divide everything by 2 and get 171p equals 4s plus 37r plus 340q. Now let's go back and just get some information from the question. It says p is not 0, q is not 0. So p and q are not 0. They're at least 1. Note they're the leading sort of digits here. So we want it to really be sort of a four-digit number in each representation. Um, the other thing is because they're in base 7, it's going to turn out that each number can be at most 6. So p and q, they're in this set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. r and s don't have the stipulation that they're not 0. So they could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's our setup here. And given those sort of conditions, we're looking to make this equation true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calculator to create some tables. So let's just sort of do, I don't know, let's call it k. Here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we're going to do sort of well, our p. And then here's what I want to have here is sort of k times p. Here, so we'll do the, not, not p, sorry. We need 171. So this is going to be sort of the p value. 171 times 0 is 0. 171 times 1 is 171. Let me use my calculator to streamline this. One thing that's nice to do is maybe use the list. Stat, edit. I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Put those in, and then I can go, let's see if I go to the top. So I go over here, up there, and I can make L2 be 171 times second the 1 would give me L1, and just spits these out. Now I can just copy these over. So 171, 342, a little bit weird copying with this technology here. And then I get 513. And then I get, let's see, I get a calculator that doesn't like what I'm doing, uh, 684. And then I get 855. And last I get 1026. So this is the left-hand side has to be one of these numbers. Actually, it can't be 0 because p can't be 0. So that was the left-hand side. Over here, I have sort of the 4 times each of these. So 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 1 is 4. 8, 12, add 16. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. 37, I get 0. 37, 74. And now I'm going to rely on the calculator a little bit. So I can go up here and just say it's... 37 times L1 now, and what I get is 0, 37, 74, it's 111, 148, 185, 222. Last one, I've got the 340s. Now I can't have Q equal to 0, so I'm going to skip that one. I get 340, and then 680, and I'm going to start relying on the calculator. I get 340 times, oops, say a second, twice, L1. I'll spit that down. So I get 1020 and then 1360. And then I get 1700 and 2040. 2040? Yes. Okay. So now my idea here is whatever s, r, and q are, so s is going to give me one of, 4s is going to give me one of the numbers in this column, 37r is going to give me one of the numbers in this column, 340q is going to give me one of the numbers in this column, 171p is going to be one of the numbers in this column. So all we need to do, maybe not all, but what we need to do is figure out sort of one number here that we can write as a sum of one of the numbers in this column plus one of the numbers in this column 
plus one of the numbers in this column. So we write one number in the 171 column. It's the sum of one number from each of the other three. So if we look at this, one thing we can do right away, just do red to cross things out, is the biggest number we can get in the 171 column is 1,026. So these last three Q ones, they're just too big to make this work. So if I picked one of these, I can never get down to, whoops, 1,026 here. So we're going to do that. Now, if I picked 1,026 for the Q, let's see. I could do the 1,020, and then I need 6, but I can't make that happen. Uh, let's say I could do this 680. So let's maybe look at 1,000. Whoops. Quit here. So let's do, if I did 680, let's see. The biggest I could get would be 24 plus 222. That's not big enough to give me 1,026. So I know if I did the 1,026, the 1020 doesn't help me. 680, these two aren't big enough to get 680 up to 1026, so I can't have 1026. Uh, so now 1020, I know I can't have because that's bigger than the biggest thing here. And if I add something from here and something from here, it's going to get even bigger than 1020 or stay the same if I pick two zeros. So 1020 is gone. Um, and you can kind of play this game a little bit. Maybe if you search here, you have the 680. You might notice you have the 680, the 4, the 0. That gives me the 684. And so if I look at that, this is P equal to 4, S equal to 1, R equal to 0, and Q equal to, let's see, 2. So that tells me what my number is. Uh, my number is, let's go back up, the PQRS is probably the easier to remember one. PQRS, let's see, that was the base 7 representation. And so that tells me my number in base 10 should be 4 times 7 cubed, plus Q is 2 times 7 squared, plus R is 0 times 7, plus, well, 1. Here. So that really should be my number. And I get 4 times 7 to the third plus 2 times 7 squared. You can skip the 0 plus 1. And that gives me a number of 1471. Now, just to be sure about this, it's probably a good idea to check that in the base 9. QRSP. I'm just going to write this down here. QRSP. I can see this. So when you do this in base 9, this would be 2 times 9 cubed plus r is 0 times 9 squared plus 1 times 9 plus 4. And this should give me the same number. So we can just check that to verify that this works out. 2 times 9 to the third. I can skip the 0 plus 9 plus 4. And it does, in fact, give me the 1471. So my answer here is 1471. Again, not a multiple choice question. You just have to fill that in. Okay, next one. So let's see, that was 17. Let's look at 18. Here. We do 18. Let's see, so this says, in approval voting, each voter can distribute up to five votes among six candidates. For example, you could cast three votes for one candidate, two for another, or you could cast one vote for each of four candidates and not cast your fifth vote. So you can actually not vote for anyone here. We want to know in how many ways can you distribute your votes. So this is a classic combinatorics question, kind of dressed up a little bit, known as stars and bars. So right away, um, I'm going to recognize this as something called stars and bars. I'm just going to put this here so you can look that up if you're interested in learning more about this see how this works, maybe a little more explanation. So what I'm going to think about is the candidates here. So the candidates, you've got, let's say, A, B, C, D, E, and then, oh, six candidates, F, but then this G, this is sort of no one. So there's really a seventh candidate being, I'm not going to vote for anyone here. And that's one of the ways you can vote. I'm going to not use that vote. And what we're going to do is now we have five votes and we have seven candidates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the bars sort of be separators between the candidates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, suppose I voted three for candidate A, say two for candidate, let's say C, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a situation where I want to do a star being a vote, so 3 for A, and then I get a divider between A and B. I have no stars between A and B. I have two stars for C, no star, or sorry, that ends my C, nothing for D. So what I'm doing here, let's just point this out here, these are your votes for A, these ones in here, those are your votes for B, that's none. These are your votes for C. These are your votes for D. E didn't get any votes. And then there's a sort of E there. And then F is going to be this range out here. I think I may be missing one. So this is D, that's E. Oh, I have to go up to G. Yeah, OK, it wasn't enough. So I need to do another divider. And I have, again, no votes for F. And then I have no votes for G. So if you think about this, really what's going to happen is I'm going to put a string of these stars and these bars here. And so there's going to be always five stars. If I don't vote for anyone, they'll end up in this G range. And I need six dividers. So I have seven voting options if I throw in the vote for no one option. And really I get sort of the left and the right. So it only has six dividers. So what that means is I have 12 total slots here. So I sometimes write these as sort of slots. So there's 12 of these sort of slots, and I have to pick five of the slots to be where the stars go, and then the rest of them are bars. If you do that, that completely describes your voting situation. And so this is really just 12, choose 5. And you might evaluate this on your calculator using the, this is a combination, 12 NCR5. I do 12, I go to math, probability, this is the NCR combinations 5. I get 792, whoops, and that tells me I made some kind of mistake here. So let's go look at this again, 3, 5, let's see, I have, so I know this is a mistake because I didn't get one of these, so let's think about this. Uh, let's say we have five votes amongst six candidates, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divisions, so we really have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 candidates really here. And I'm going to pick five slots. Oh, my problem here is I can't add. So I have one, two, three, four, five stars, and one, two, three, four, five, six bars. So this is not 12. That should be 11. 11 choose five. So it's six plus five. I think that might be what I even said. I could go back and look, but it's 11 choose five, not 792. Let's do second entry. Move over 11 choose five. That's 462. And now I'm glad that 792 wasn't one of the answers. I get 462 here. So this one, if you know the stars and bars technique, short and sweet. It's just one of these counting techniques that pops up from time to time. 19. I'm going to cut this out or copy it. Okay. Copy, and then we'll paste here, and okay. So this says the polynomial p of x is x to the fourth plus m times x cubed plus n times x squared minus 24x plus 144 has exactly two distinct integer roots and no other roots real or complex. Find m plus n. So I'm going to write my roots in kind of a weird way just to make some calculations a little bit easier later on. So I'm going to say my roots here are, I'm going to say they're negative a and negative b. And if I think about it, this polynomial p of x, that means if these are the roots, this should be x plus a and x plus b. So I wanted to get a plus here, that's why I put the negatives there. Um, and so what we're saying is there's exactly two distinct integer roots and no other roots. So what I could have, there's a couple options. One, I've got these two, no other complex roots. I have to get up to degree four. So one thing I could do is I could square both of these. Or this p of x up here, maybe it's one of them once and the other one three times. So I think we're going to have to try both of these to see sort of just what works out here. Let's maybe start with this second one first. Um, I think this is actually one that's not going to work. So I'll do that first to see what happens. So what I'm going to do is just expand this out. 
So this is going to take a little bit of work. So what I get is p of x, this is x to the fourth plus mx cubed plus nx squared minus 24x plus 144. This is going to equal, let's see, x to the fourth. Now if I get an x cubed, I can do, well, let's, let's do it away. It's probably a little more well known. Here, so x plus a, I can cube this as x cubed plus 3x squared b plus 3xb squared plus b cubed using the binomial theorem. And what I get is then x to the fourth. To create an x cubed, I could get a plus ax cubed or x times 3b. So 3b x cubed. To get an x squared, I could do a times 3x. No, a times 3b here, 3b x squared. So that's going to give me 3ab. Or I can do x times 3b squared x plus 3b squared, x squared. To get an x when I multiply these together, I can get x times b cubed, or a times 3b squared. So it's 3ab squared, and then the b cubed, x, and then my constant is ab cubed. So what that gives me here is I get some equations. I get a plus 3b equals m. I have to equate the coefficients of x cubed. I get 3ab plus 3b squared equals n. I get 3ab squared plus b cubed equals negative 24. And I get ab cubed equals 144. OK, so I just need to work on these. So I'm going to start with this one here. I can factor out a b squared, b squared times 3a plus b, that better be negative 24. Um, let's see, so we get that. Um, let's see, maybe work on this. Let's see, how do we want to do this? If I, hmm, let's maybe look at this. 144, if you factor this, 144 is 12 squared, 12 times 12, and so 12 is 2 squared times 3, so I get 2 squared times 3, so 144 is 2 to the 4th times 3 squared. If a and b, let's see, roots are just integers, they're distinct, so they're different from each other. So if you look at this, I can't have a factor of 3 in b, because I'd cube that 3 and that'd be too many 3s, to give me 144. And so what I'm going to do is I can either have a factor of 2 in b, so b could be 2, or really b could be, well, could be plus or minus 2. b could also be plus or minus 1 here. There's no other way if I cube something and get too many positive factors. So let's just try these out. So let's do b equals, okay, let's say 2. Here. So if b was 2, we'd get 8, we'd be left with 1, 2 missing, and 2, 3 is 9, 18. And then b squared times 3a plus b, let's just try that, 2 squared times 3 times 18 plus 2 doesn't give me negative 24. I guess I should have been able to figure that out pretty readily because I'm doing all positive stuff to give me a negative. So let's see. Um, what I'm going to have to do then is let's maybe make b negative. And then a is going to have to be, if I do a negative, it's going to be a negative times a negative to give me a positive. Actually, a negative b cubed is still going to be a negative. And then I get a negative 18. So let's try that. Now negative 2 squared, that's going to be 4. I'm going to get negative 3 times 18. Really, 3 times negative 18, but I move the negative around. And then I get minus 2. So I'll get at least a positive times a negative. Well, that's negative 224. So that didn't work. Let's let b, if I let b equal 1, a is going to be positive, actually 144 here. 
Um, and so what I'll get is this is clearly going to be positive. So then A is going to be, so let A, B be negative 1. Let's A be negative 144. And the suspicion here is this is not going to work. B squared is 1. So I just need to do 3 times A, which is negative 144, plus B, which is negative 1. And that's just not going to work. So this whole thing did not work out here at all. Maybe I was doing a little more work than I needed to. But that basically tells me we are not in the situation where we have one root of sort of multiplicity 1, another root of multiplicity 3. So we're in this situation here. We have two distinct roots. They're each multiplicity 2. And now we're going to play the same game here. So what we're going to get is p of x. Again, it was x to the fourth plus mx cubed plus nx squared minus 24x plus 144. This is supposed to be x plus a squared, which is x squared plus 2ax plus a squared times x plus b squared, which is x squared plus 2bx plus b squared. Again, I chose my roots to get positives here, just so I have to deal with the negatives. This is going to be, let's see, x to the fourth. I can get that with a square times a square. Um, x cubed, I'm going to write it this way. How do I get x cubed? I can get x squared times an x. That's a 2b. I can get 2ax times an x squared. So x times x squared give me x cubed, or x squared times x. How do I get x squared? I can do x squared times my constant. That's a b squared. Uh, I could do 2ax times 2bx. So that'll give me 4ab. And let's see. Then I can do a squared times x squared. So that's plus a squared. And then plus x. How do I get x? I get 2ax times b squared would give me 2ab squared x. And then a squared times 2ab would give me 2a squared b times x. And my constant is just going to be a squared b squared. OK, now I'm going to equate coefficients here. x to the fourth equals x to the fourth. m equals 2, can we rewrite it as 2a times 2b? That's 2 times a plus b. n is the coefficient of x squared. That's, I'm going to rewrite it as a squared. Put the a first, so it makes me feel more comfortable. 4ab plus b squared. Negative 24 is the coefficient of x. It's going to be this thing. I'm going to do a 2 I can factor out. I get a squared b, taking the second term with a higher degree of a first. just makes me feel more comfortable. And then the 144 is a squared times b squared. So we get this to work out. And now we just need to solve this here. So what I'm going to do, if m is 2 times a plus b, this n here, well, what's this? I'm going to say this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. It's almost what we have here, but we have another 2ab. The reason I want to write this like that is then this is a plus b squared plus 2ab. Okay, we'll keep that there. This negative 24, I factored out a 2, I can factor out an ab as well. So this is 2ab. And I'm left with an a plus b. And now what I've done here is I've effectively written all of these right-hand sides in terms of a plus b and a times b. So we're looking again for m plus n. Um, that's what we're going to work on. So m plus n, that's what we want. So I'm going to go back up to the question and verify that. So find m plus n here. So m plus n is 2 times a plus b plus a plus b squared plus 2ab. So that's what we're looking for. Now my hope is to use these last two equations to find a plus b and a plus b. Sorry, a times b and a plus b. So the, pick a different color here. How about red? Show up. So a squared b squared equals 144. That tells me AB, well, AB is going to be either 12 or negative 12. So square, it could be plus or minus 12. It don't matter which one we pick here. If we do that, AB is 12. So let's see. If AB was 12, I'd get a 24. So let's maybe sit here and do an AB 
versus a plus b. If we pick 12, what happens? If we pick negative 12, what happens? So if a, b was 12, we get 2 times 12 is 24. That forces a plus b to be 1. If a, b was negative 12, we get a negative 24. Whoops, not 1, we get 24. We have to get a negative 1 there to make the whole thing negative 24. So if a, b is 12, a plus b is negative 1. If a, b was negative 12, we get our negative 24, and a, b is 1. So now we know a and b are roots, so they're integers. So we can figure out which of these two things is actually possible to find two integers whose product is 12 and whose sum is negative 1. Now if the product, so product is 12 and sum is negative 1, or product is negative 12 and sum is 1. If the product was a positive 12, they would both have to have the same sign, but then there's no way they're going to add up to negative 1. They both have to be negative, but their sum is going to be way bigger than negative 1 there, or way bigger than absolute value. So this actually can't happen. And so we have our AB is negative 12, A plus B is 1. Just to make you comfortable here, you could say A and B. Let's see, one's positive, one's negative. You get a 4 and a 3, and I want the bigger one to be positive, so I get 4 and negative 3. But really, I just need A, B, and A plus B, and I sort of trust that works out, perhaps. And then our M plus N, well, this is 2 times 1 plus 1 squared plus 2 times A times B is negative 12. There. And so what we get is 2 plus 1 minus 24. That adds up to negative 21. So our m plus n is negative 21, and that does work out to be an answer. So we get an answer of negative 21. Okay, last one, number 20 here. So I'm going to do the cut and paste thing again. Okay, so for 20, it says a subset S of 1, 2, 3, up to N is called an odd neighbored if for each even number K and S, if K is less than N, then S contains both K minus 1 and K plus 1. And if K equals N, then S contains K minus 1. Uh, for example, these are odd neighbored subsets of 1, 2, 3, up to 8, and we want to find the number of non-empty circle that maybe whoops Let's circle that word non-empty I'm getting in trouble here so non-empty odd neighbored subsets of one two three up to twelve so what's this odd neighbored thing mean what well, says if we have an even number k basically we have to get numbers on both sides of it so if we have an even number the odd numbers on either side of it have to be there. The only exception being if that even number is sort of the biggest number in the set, we don't have to have one bigger because that can't be part of the set, but we do have to have the one that's one small. So empty set works, one, three, five, seven. There's no even numbers, that's fine. The two has to have the one and the three. Here, if we're going up to eight, the four has to have the three and the five. The eight has to have the seven. Now, you could throw a one in here, just like we threw a five in there. That's odd neighbored. Sometimes it takes a while to get used to what this is um, doing. I like the fact that like, they give some examples here so you can kind of verify if you know what the definition is. Now, how do we get this up to 12? Here, there's going to be an awful lot of these. I mean, we can look here. We're not really going to want to list out at least 232 of these. So we're going to use some kind of a strategy. Um, let's just figure out, let's let A sub about I equal the number of odd neighbored subsets of, uh, let's see, 1, 2, up to i. So we're going to do this here. So a1, well, to find odd neighbored subsets of up to 1, if we only have one element, our subsets are either the empty set, or I'm not going to write it with set notation just to save on what I'm writing, but it's just one. So just the element one here. So I have an empty set or one. So both of these are odd neighbored. Um, there's no even numbers in either one. So A1 is two. A2, note here when I'm counting these, I'm going to include the empty set. When we get done, we can just subtract one off from the answer.
whoops. So a2, when we do two, I could do the empty set. I could put a one in. And then if I include two, this odd neighbor condition says I have to have the one. So that gives me three. A3, let me just get it. Sometimes it's nice to write these out. You get some initial data. Maybe you start to see a pattern and you get kind of familiar with what's going on. A3, I can do the empty set. I could do one. I could do just three. I could do one and three. If I throw a two in, so I'm tending to do the things without the two, and then I get the one and three. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let me do one more of these. A four. So I'll get the empty set. I could have one. I could have three. I could have one and three. So no even numbers means you know just put the odd numbers any way you want. Now if I include two, that will force one and three. If I include four, I have to have three. I could choose to have one. So I could do one, three, and four. So these are just two, just four. Now if I have two and four, two by itself will force one and three. Four forces three, and that's what we get. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this equals eight. So our odd neighborhood subsets, we get eight. Now, you, we want to somehow come up with some kind of recurrence because once we get up to 12, we're going to count like several hundred of these. So what we want to do is come up with an idea. So what I'm going to do is say a sub, let's just say i plus 1. How about a sub i? So I'm going to think about how many odd neighbored subsets of up to of 1 through i are there. Well, one common trick here, and based on the way this is set up, it seems likely this might work, is I'm going to do this is the number of odd, I'm just going to write neighbored, shorthand, subsets of 1 up to i, and this is going to be with i, plus the number Let's just say of these same subsets, 1 up to i, without i. So let's worry about the ones with i and the ones without i. So what I'm going to have to do here, let's think about this. So if I remove i, so let's. sometimes it might be a little bit easier to think about this in terms of even or odd here. So if i is even, um, what we get is ai equals, okay, if I include i, what happens? Well, this is the number of odd neighborhood subsets that have i. So if i is even, if I throw a 4 in, I have to have the 3 here. And then essentially, I just need up to 2 to be an odd neighbored subset there. So this... If I include the i, this is going to be a i minus 2. So I'm forced to have the 4, assuming I'm in this part of the sum. That 4, because of the definition of odd neighbor, is going to force the 3. But then the rest of this can do whatever it wants as long as it has this odd neighbored condition here. Note the 2 will have the 1, but I've already got the 3. So I sort of get both because I'm already having the 3. Now if I don't have the 4, basically the odd neighbor condition just goes up to the 3. So that's going to be a i minus 1. So I do any odd neighbored subset just without the 4. So basically if I look at this part here, circle that, this part here is the same as this part here. And this business with the a i minus 2, that's telling me this part here, I go up 2, that's these, well, almost, but I tack on a 3, 4 to the end of each of these. So empty set, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's i even. If i is odd, I worry that this is something a little bit different here. We'll see. So if i is odd, so like at 3, well, if I include the 3, I've just got sort of 1, 2, 1, and nothing. Note that's this here too. So if I'm including the three, I can do any odd neighbored subset up to two, 
because of that two, the only really different condition is sort of the end one at the end, but because I'm having the three, I can just throw the two off. So that's going to give me an a i minus one. Now, if I don't include the three, then I can't have the two as well. So no three, no two, and then I'm going to have an odd neighbored subset ahead of that. So that's going to give me an a a sub i minus two. So if you look at this, you get the same recurrence for both of these. It's just sort of flipped around where it came from. Now, the nice thing here is that tells me in general, here, let's just say ai is ai minus 1 plus ai minus 2. And this is a Fibonacci recurrence, actually. And these are Fibonacci numbers, which you might have noticed. And so what I get is I just get, so 8 is 5 plus 3, 5 is 3 plus 2. If you did a0, you just get the empty set. 1 plus 2 is 3. So a5, I add up the previous 2 is 13. a6 is 13 plus 8 is 21. I'm trying to get up to 12. And the idea here is I don't have to list these out. I just add the previous two numbers. So you get 34, 8, 8. 34 plus 21 is 55. a9, 55 plus 34 is 89. a10, I get 130, 144. Four. A11, I do 144 plus 89, that's going to be 233. A12, I add these up and I get 377. Now if I look up here, 377 isn't one of my answers, but each of these includes this empty set and we're asked for the non-empty ones. So our answer is this 377 minus the one empty set. So we get 377 minus one. That's the 376, and so our answer is 376, and we're done with these problems.